souvenirs. When you travel, you both take them and you leave them. Here I am on my deck in Northern California, brushing Costa Rican mud off my boots. Who knows what's in this stuff? Maybe anteater scat, or some seeds dropped from the bill of a three-wattled bellbird that will end up in my garden, grow big, and perhaps even eat my cat. I took a hike through Costa Rica's Mata Verde cloud forest with Danilo Wallace, a park ranger born and raised in what is now one of the world's foremost rainforest preserves. My first toucan I ever saw was through a slingshot. We would kill them, cut off their beak, uh, make a necklace. Uh, so a lot of uh, guides, park rangers, or maybe ex-poachers, um, viewed it differently based on the way our parents would look at the forest, which would be something you would use, you'd go in to get lumber or hunt. Now we can't afford to do that anymore, there's very limited space and we need to protect those. Danilo showed me and a few other ooing and awing trekkers a plant thing that grows in the forest canopy, an epiphyte it is called, and which seemed to reside in the botanical United Nations. We have parts of Death Valley in Monteverde, parts of Sahara Desert, Chile, Argentina. Yes, it is a small world. The Mata Verde cloud forest, this protected environment up in the cool mountains of Costa Rica, above the steamy tropical jungles, above the beaches where real estate agents swarm like killer bees flogging raw land and condos, above the plantations that grow some of the best coffee in the world. Above this fray, up this really awful muddy road, there should be some sort of biological Walden, right? But no. All of these lovely impatience you see lining the footpaths don't come from here either. They're originally from East Africa. And the coffee? Well, native Costa Rican beans are pretty lousy. The good coffee is made from beans imported from the Middle East. And according to a study published recently in the journal Nature, it is not only winds and birds and stuff tracked in by people, climate change is having its effect too. Probably the most threatened groups are the amphibians and 41% of all our species have disappeared in less than 20 years. Well, Golden Toad, it's a bufo, bufo peregrinus, uh, but this species was found only along the continental divide in Monteverde. And in 1987, uh, 1,500 were counted at these small uh, pools. Uh, in 1988, in the same pool, uh, only one male was located. Uh, in 1989, again, that same male reappeared, and that was the last we ever saw of that species. You wouldn't know this backstory if you took a walk in this forest, however. The trees cut down by the Quakers, who settled here in the 50s, are growing back quite well, thank you. And there are still primary rainforests, hosting at least 400 breeds of birds, including the rare resplendent Quetzal. The adjective is in the name of the bird, I did not add it. But it fits this long feathered jungle dandy idolized by the Aztecs perfectly. This is my shaky take on the Quetzal, they're pretty hard to find. Like most rainforests, you often don't see much during the day, aside from the pesky cotamundis, often like raccoons raiding garbage cans, or hummingbirds on the terrace, more than 50 different colors and sheens, or howler monkeys, the second loudest mammal on earth next to the blue whale. One piece of advice, don't walk under howler monkeys. Your sense of humor is, shall we say, scatological. To really see the forest for the trees, you have to go out at night with a flashlight. Don't touch those colorful frogs. Like dangerous women, more makeup often means poison. In all honesty, this biological mosh pit has always been with us. Winds have always blown across oceans, and as the old Gershwin song goes, fish gotta swim and birds gotta fly. But cars don't gotta pollute and factories don't gotta spew. Those are within our control. The frogs and toads and other creatures of the night are sounding the alarm.